Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John, and it's time for another installment of my massively underrated song series, a show where I like to put the spotlight on tracks that I don't feel get enough love, maybe I don't hear people talking about them, or maybe they've just been swept through the cracks of time as we focus on the bigger singles and forget about the deep cuts. Today we're looking at arguably the biggest artist of the 21st century, Taylor Swift herself, and I know what you're thinking, John, uh, how can underrated and Taylor Swift be in the same sentence? That makes no sense to me. What an excellent question that I'm so excited to answer and not feeling sarcastic about it all. With an artist as insanely popular as Taylor, I think she's even more susceptible to having those songs fade out of people's memories. So what am I trying to do today? Put seven of those back on your radar. Listen, my main point with making this video was to kind of bridge the gap between the Swifty and the casual fan. Hopefully we can meet somewhere in the middle. If you enjoy the content, then please drop a like on it. If you want to see a part two, let me know in the comments down below. And also maybe check out some of the other Taylor content on my channel. Slow beats, Even in the face of adversity, Taylor shows that she has the backbone to try and see a relationship through to its end, take the entire journey even if it's going to be dangerous. I love the gentle acoustic guitars on this track, they're so serene. Her voice is very soothing, very calming, not to the point where you're tuning it out like a creek babbling in the background, it's more so just gentle, effervescent, persuasive. I love the conviction that she has here, it's very optimistic and positive, and I also appreciate that you can have a very visceral reaction to this slow burning tune. It's something where you can easily slip on the shoe that she's wearing, put yourself in that painting, and you see exactly what she's describing. And she's always been good with detail, but this underappreciated gem on red is just the top of the line quality. But we were dancing. At number six, I put one of the best songs from a very confusing, off-balanced album reputation. This is Dancing With Our Hands Tied. I love the electronic production. It has these steady, shimmering synths during the verses, and then we get that bigger drop that almost has an EDM quality about it. This is a great metaphor for feeling trapped within a relationship. And before this song, I hadn't actually heard it put to tape like this. I really appreciate that we get this metaphor of, oh, we're dancing with our hands tied. We're in this relationship where we're getting things really messy. It's knotted up and we're just making things worse by kind of dancing around the problems, but we're almost pretending that there's not a problem to begin with. Just don't go. Maybe in the afterglow. Afterglow is a big moment of clarity, like walking outside on the first warm day of spring. There's a lot of color that just radiates vibes off of this song, and I love that I'm able to see color in this track. It's something that feels very nostalgic, bubbly, and warm, and I can appreciate the 80s synth tones. Also, her vocal cadence here. It's a bit playful during the hook as she sings, I don't want to do this to you, but she also is very aware of everything going on surrounding this situation. It's an incredible track from an album that I definitely didn't love, but there were moments like this that made them so worth coming back to. It's about to be Halloween. Have the tissues ready for number four, because this is Ronin, a charity single that was released during the Red album cycle leading up to it actually, but it was not on the album. I think it tends to slip through the cracks of a lot of people's minds, because maybe they think it was on the album, it's not actually there when they go back to listen to it, and as a result, it's one of Taylor's least listened to songs ever. Now, that might not be saying much as big as Taylor is, but I think this track is extremely important. It's a charity single, and it was written for a young boy, Ronan, of that name. This is a boy that lost his battle with childhood cancer in 2011. The song released in 2012, and it was done in collaboration with his mother, Maya, who had written a lot of blog posts, and that's primarily what Taylor pulled from as inspiration. I think this song gets even more gutting, not only as you listen to the moving way that Taylor sings, you can tell she had a personal connection to this situation, but also to all of the millions that have been affected by childhood cancer, to all the kids that no longer actually get to be here to see what their future could have been because they were pulled away by this vicious monster. At 
And number three, we have Cold As You, a song that Taylor only ever performed one singular time. Not even while she was promoting the self-titled album that this is lifted from, but it was actually at a stop on the Red Tour, and it was a reworked version, so I guess that counts. This is Taylor at her most melodramatic, and it could be easy to chunk this up as teenage emotions just getting the best of her, but for me, this is the perfect double-edged sword. I love the melodrama, but I also just kind of keep throwing myself back onto that sword because I can see past the cheese. I know this song has a lot of twang, not everyone's gonna be a fan of her early country sound, but occasionally I do miss that, and this is one of the best ones that you can go back to. Hmm, this is the title track from her 2010 album Speak Now, Speak Now, and it's one of the least streamed songs on Spotify and YouTube? That doesn't make much sense to me, but this is a masterclass in Taylor Swift as a songwriter. She's so good at telling a story, and I think this album is probably the best example outside of folklore of her doing that, and I think this one in particular really deserved a music video. You can picture yourself at this wedding, and you can see Taylor standing up in the aisle and saying, yes, I object! She nailed the country pop sound here, and her vocal fluctuations and rather subdued verse vocals sound fancy, much like the wedding that she's attending, and also subsequently about to crash because she's insisting that this girl, that this guy's about to marry, that's not right for her. Taylor is the one that's right. All around, this is an amazing song with one of my absolute favorite elements being how definitive the chorus is. It ends and you just know it's sealing it shut like licking an envelope and that's it. Stick it in the mailbox, it's done. Take me to the lakes where all the poets went to die. I don't belong. I could riot that this wasn't included on all versions of the albums and it's just listed as a bonus track, or I could praise the music gods that this song exists in the first place. Oh my god, not too many songs make me full on tear up or just straight up cry every single time I listen to it, but this has like a 99% efficiency rate in that department and that is saying something. It's not that it's that sad of a song, it's actually quite happy if you think about it. It's about escaping with your lover, taking that time away, knowing that this other bullshit, it doesn't matter. I love the expansive vocabulary that she uses here. I feel like I got a bit smarter listening to it, especially when she uses some of those phrases and plays on words like, what are my words worth? A reference to the poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. There's a lot of lines that I love here, like the one about watching wisteria grow over her feet because she hasn't moved in years. She is actually content and she's relaying that in song form. And the way that she does it is just explosive. It ignites something in me and it's one of the best songs, one of the best choruses that she has ever written. Thanks so much for watching and liking my list of some of the most underrated Taylor Swift songs ever. Do you agree or disagree with some of my picks? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to see a part two, then make sure to let me know that in the comments too. Subscribe for the love of music. You can catch more of my Taylor Swift videos here. And outside of that, I'll be back soon for more right here on ARTV.